The radar equation is probably the most important equation in the context of radar remote sensing. It is a fundamental constraint on how radar systems operate. In a LiDAR context, you will also come across the LiDAR equation, which is very similar, but it has some subtle differences because you're using lasers and you're uh, in the optical and infrared domain, and therefore you have atmospheric conditions to worry about. In a radar context, we don't have to worry about transmission through the atmosphere. So that won't appear in the radar equation. What the radar equation does is estimates how much energy you will get back to your sensor if you transmit a certain amount of energy. So the key thing is that it is measuring a return signal, so the intensity of the echo that comes back. Fundamentally, that is proportional to how much energy we transmit. So the key, the first parameter in the radar equation is the transmitted power. If we transmit twice as much power, we'll get twice as much signal back. So it's a linear relationship between the transmitted and the received power. A key term that we use is isotropic. We refer to isotropic transmitters as being a transmitter that sends energy equally in all directions. An isotropic scatterer scatters energy equally in all directions. It means the incoming wave will scatter with the object and then it scatters the energy equally in all directions. Typically, many objects won't do that. Many objects will actually scatter preferentially into one direction. A key term is isotropic. An isotropic radiator is a transmitter that will transmit energy equally in all directions. An isotropic scatterer is an object that, if a wave is interacting with an object, it will scatter the energy equally in all directions. It's a bit of an idealized type of scatterer. Most real objects will actually scatter preferentially into one direction or another. Sometimes they'll preferentially scatter the energy directly back to the satellite, like a trihedral corner reflector. The key thing about an isotropic scatter is that it's scattering equally in all directions and that is a convenient approximation, especially when we don't know what the nature of the target is. Now, if our antenna was an isotropic transmitter, so if it transmitted energy equally in all directions, it would lose energy in proportion to the surface area of the sphere, so the expanding sphere of energy. And so it would lose energy as a factor of 4 pi r squared. So it's a square law. It's a, a loss in proportion to the distance squared. Now our antennas are much better than an isotropic radiator, our antennas are able to direct a lot of that energy into a small narrow range of directions and we characterize that with the antenna gain. So the antenna gain is a factor that determines how much of that energy is directed into the direction towards the target rather than isotropically. By the time that energy of our transmitted pulse reaches our target, it will have dropped off in energy by 4 pi r squared. So r is the distance between our antenna and the target that we're trying to measure. Now the target will scatter some of that energy back towards the antenna. We'll talk about that in a second. But the key thing is that the energy that is rescattered by our target on its way back to the antenna is also diminished in intensity by 1 over 4 pi r squared. Now, because we don't know anything about our target, we use the symbol sigma to represent the property of our target in terms of how good it is at scattering. That's our radar cross-section. What we do to characterize our radar cross-section is that we say, well, if it was a hole in space that collected a certain amount of energy that was arriving at the target and then redistributed it isotropically, how much energy would get back to our sensor? And because we're considering our target, we're characterizing our target as a, as a hole in space that's collecting that energy, we use a cross-section, and we talk about the radar cross-section as our measure of how good this scatterer is at scattering energy. Our radar cross-section is then in units of meters squared. It's an area. When we are looking at the Earth's surface, what we do is normalize that over the area that we're measuring. 
So it becomes an area, the radar cross section, divided, divided by an area, so the area of ground over which we're measuring. And so we end up with a unitless measure called the normalized radar cross section or sigma naught. And that's the way that we characterize our target. So we're making an assumption that it's an isotropic scatterer. And we make that assumption simply because we don't know exactly what the scatterer is like. We don't know if it is a, a particularly special scatterer, if it directs energy in one particular direction or not. We have to make a broad assumption that it's an isotropic scatterer. Now when the energy from our target is on its way back to the sensor, it's losing energy again by 1 over 4 pi r squared. And then when it gets to the antenna, we have a parameter called the antenna effective area, which characterizes how good the antenna is at collecting that energy coming back. The result of all that is that our radar equation essentially says that the amount of energy that we get back, so the power received, is equal to the power transmitted times the gain times the antenna effective area times our target property, this sigma or sigma naught. And that's all divided by 16 times pi squared times r to the fourth. So our energy is dropping off with r to the fourth. That's an incredible loss of energy. So even over a short distance, let's say 100 meters, on its way to the target, it's already dropped by a factor of 10,000. By the time it comes back, we've now lost uh, another 10,000. One of the key things that the radar equation tells us is that the amount of energy that we get back in a radar system is extremely small. It drops off very, very quickly with distance. The important thing about the radar equation is that it tells us that the amount of energy that we get back is very, very small. It drops off very, very quickly with distance. What we end up with in the radar equation is that it tells us that the power received drops off as 1 over the distance to the power of 4. That's a very, very rapid drop off. Even with just 100 meters, you're already 10,000 times less in signal by the time you reach the target. And by the time it gets back to the antenna, it's another 10,000 times smaller. And so you're 100 million times less intense in terms of the echo compared to the signal that you transmitted. Now scale that up to 600 kilometers of an Earth observation satellite with a radar system. And you can see that the amount of signal that you will get back from our radar transmitter is extremely small. That puts certain limits on how radar systems can work in terms of how much energy you transmit compared to how much energy you get back. It means that radar satellites are really restricted in terms of how much power and the amount of power that they need. Because the radar equation tells us that the amount of signal that we will get back is so small, is that it puts certain limits on what a radar system can do. It means we have to generate pulses that have very high powers. And that puts some limits on terms of uh, the peak power and the length of time that the pulse that we might transmit. In a satellite context, your only source of power is solar panels. And so it's really important that you can collect as much energy as possible from the sun. Unlike passive sensors, radar sensors have to transmit their own energy and therefore they have to collect as much energy as possible so that they can transmit high intensity signals to ensure that you get a signal back that you can measure. The good news is that the technology is good enough to actually transmit high powered pulses so that you can still detect the echoes coming back from the Earth's surface, even at hundreds of kilometers in orbit above the Earth. The radar equation is one of the most important equations in radar remote sensing. It determines how much energy we get back in an echo depending on how much energy we transmit. So let's imagine that we're here at our radar system and over there is our target that we're trying to measure. So one of the key things is how we transmit the energy. A very simple system would transmit energy isotropically, so equally in all directions. But we have an antenna that's a bit better than that. It can direct some of the energy or more of the energy towards our target. And we characterize that as the function G, which is the antenna gain. So the key thing is we transmit a power, so PT, 
is our transmitted power and it's focused by the antenna with the factor of the antenna gain. Then the signal travelling at the speed of light travels all the way down towards our target and as it travels towards our target the energy is lost as a function of the surface area of a sphere and that drops off as 1 over 4 pi r squared. So this is our target. The energy from the antenna has dropped off considerably so it's now dropped off by a factor of 4 pi r squared, surface area of a sphere. Some of that energy is going to interact with our target and be returned to the antenna. Because we don't know anything about our target, we have to assume that it's an isotropic scatter, that it takes the energy and it scatters it equally in all directions. Now the way that we characterise our target is to say that, well, with this big pulse of energy coming over past the target, how big a hole in space would you have that could collect the energy and then redistribute it equally in all directions, some of which would go back to the antenna? And it's this area that we talk about as the radar cross-section, measured as an area in units of metre squared. When we're measuring the Earth's surface, what we do is normalise that to the area over which we're measuring. So it becomes an area divided by an area, and so we end up with a unitless quality known as the normalised radar cross-section, or sigma naught. This energy is then redistributed and makes its way back, or some of the energy makes its way back to the radar system. The energy on its way back to the radar system is also losing energy at a rate of 1 over 4 pi r squared. So it's losing energy as a square law as well. By the time the energy gets back to our antenna, the antenna then captures some of that energy and that's where it's characterised by the antenna's effective area. The net effect of the radar equation is that we lose energy at a rate of 1 over r to the fourth.